Welcome so. everybody to the Woodlands Waterway Art Festival 15th anniversary. Um, we are so excited to have you here and um, enjoying what we have to offer this time around and these wonderful artists that are with us today. Shatik has had a shop the artist like a pro. Um, we're always so full of questions. Everybody always asks us what's the best way to shop an art festival and so we're really excited to have this opportunity to have you here and have these wonderful artists with us. I'm going to turn it over to Sally Richard. She's our uh, mm -hmm. Artist management. She's done a fan fantastic job um, bringing all these artists to us and uh, through the jury process. Very interesting and intricate, and we have so many wonderful personalities we work with and absolutely love it. So we're excited to be here. Again, I'm Jenny Wright, the executive director of the Art Council, and um, this is my well, this is really my first year back as um, in charge of the art festival, so I'm excited as I'll get out. Just a different gig. <laughs> um, wish we were on the water. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I'll let Sally go right now. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, everybody. We were so happy you could join us. Um, and I'm going to do a, a short, brief uh, introduction for our artists that are joining us. Um, so as I say your name, if you just wave so everybody kind of connects with you. Uh, I'm going to start with Barbara Mason. Um, good morning, Barbara. Good morning. She, she was um, our best of show in drawing in the 2018 festival. Uh, she lives up in Frisco, Texas, so she's a Texas lady. Yeah. And her business name is Dragonfly Studio Creations. And her medium of choice, uh, she enjoys pastels and watercolors. Mm -hmm. And I think this is your fourth year with us, Barbara, is that right? Yes, I think it's the fourth or fifth year, yes. Okay. Um, we're so happy to have you joining us in the virtual world and trying this out with us. Um, and is there anything else you'd like to add? Oh, I'm excited. Uh, it's great to be seen, especially during these times right now. And um, it's just been a joy learning all of the technical process and getting connected. So I'm really looking forward this weekend to seeing collectors' faces rather than just voices or email or text. So right. Uh, uh, excited to connect and share the art this weekend. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you again for joining us. Um, and then Yoram Gall, wave to us, Yoram. Um, I think this is your eighth year joining us. Um, so you're you're definitely a, a no more than that. I don't remember, but I think I started uh, in 2006 <laughs> and then I stopped for three years. Yeah, maybe. Tenth time, I think, or okay. ninth or something. Um, and Yoram is our only international artist with us on the virtual festival. So we really appreciate you giving it a, a try with us. Um, and you are, your medium of choice is painting. Um, I think you do a lot of things, but you're in the show as a painter. And your business name is Yoram Gall Studio. Is there anything you'd like to add? Um. Well, you and Jenny know I was very apprehensive about mm -hmm. virtual shows when I began. I almost opted out because I thought, look, 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 I have a show virtual as though in Norfolk, Virginia, in a show mm -hmm. I love, Stockley Gardens, a small modest show. They send me an email, I sent everything. There's no, sh I don't know what it means that it's a virtual show. I think <laughs> they just have the things on the website people can't interact or buy. So, but I did do a virtual show, as you know, three weeks ago um, in Naperville, a very good show, Riverwalk it's called. And that was interactive like this, not as sophisticated as event tonight, but it was um, the ability to talk. And I spoke all of Sunday to okay. my collectors and buyers and I sold paintings and one of them is in the woodlands, one of my big collectors, and he's mm -hmm. going to join this weekend with me also. Um, um, so I got really uh, uh, encouraged. And Good. when I joined this three days ago, I think Wednesday evening, I got uh, an email from a vent and I, you sold your first piece, a big canvas to Dallas area. One of my collectors, I was, thrilled and I am really beginning and actually I'll tell you one more thing if it's a good advice for Barbara or Christine or other artists 
I have decided because of what's going on to spend a lot of money on internet sales. And I approached several companies that do this, Facebook advertising and more. And I struck a deal with one of them for six month campaign that's gonna cost me a lot of money. It's already costing me, but I really have faith in it. They say that it works, like you sell shoes. I thought you can't sell original paintings online. Well, but we're excited to, to hear how that goes. And thank you again for being willing to try this with us because it's all so new, right? Um, and Joeth, yeah, yeah. yeah. Joeth Thiel is also joining us from Flagstaff, Arizona this morning. I assume that's Hi, where you are this morning. <laughs> I am. Um, I believe that this is your 10th year to join us. Does that sound might about be. right? Might be. It might be. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've been with you all a long time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Joa is with Hardwood Music Company and he is part of a family business. He and his dad, and correct me if I say this wrong, Joa, but he and his dad um, make music instruments. Um, I believe your tongue drums are your primary instrument, if I'm right. And they're That's just. Correct. And then, and then, of course, a musical furniture version of it. Yes. Um, and, and they're just beautiful. And be sure to check out on Aventini. Um, you have some great videos of actually playing the instruments so you can hear what they sound like. It's very interesting. Is there anything else you'd like to add with your introduction? Well, um, just uh, want to say hi to everybody out there. Hope everybody is safe and well. Um, I'm, we're just finding our way. This, I, I, we've never done a virtual show before. Um, don't know what to make of it. Um, so we'll see, but I'm excited to, to, uh, to see what happens here. And, um, you know, n nothing like trial by fire. <laughs> That's right. Well, again, we appreciate you joining us um, and giving us a trial. Um, and um, being with us this morning, because I think it's a little bit earlier in Arizona than it is here in Texas. Yeah, I'm two hours so. ahead of y'all, so it's nice and early here. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'd also like to give a shout out to Christina Smith. Uh, she's joining us today. She is our 2020 featured artist, and she is from Fayetteville, Arkansas. So, Christina, thank you for joining us. Um, we're happy to have you here on the on the panel with us. Um, and welcome to all of our guests that are our patrons that are, are listening in. We hope that you gather some great information this morning. Um, and with that, we will start with some questions. Yes, Melissa. Oh, this is Melissa, I have a quick housekeeping note. Um, we, everybody, all the participants are currently on mute, uh, but we'd love to hear if you have any questions towards the end. So just put your questions in the chat box and then we'll try to answer them at the end of the panel discussion. That's perfect. Thank you, Melissa. Um, and so we just, we have a few questions that might help our patrons. Um, sometimes engaging with artists, um, it can be a little bit intimidating because a lot of people are just learning about art, um, learning about how to collect pieces. Um, and so if you, if you have a patron that feels intimidated, um, engaging with an artist, what are some tips that you might have, especially in the virtual world? Um, how are you engaging with your patrons? Are you offering Zoom calls? Um, so anybody, Barbara, if you'd like to start with this, maybe? Um, um, I can start. Um, I think the first thing that I would share with a collector's virtual or uh, when we were doing art shows in person is the one thing that uh, takes away some of the fear factor is just think we are ahead of the game because once you come into an artist booth, we're both on the same plane. We both love art. We have an interest of art. So I say uh, start the introduction with discussion of art, what type of art you like. And as artists, we just go on and on. <laughs> well, that is a great icebreaker. Um, it's, uh, I always ask artists questions and patrons, what is it that you like? What is it uh, that piques your interest? So just starting the conversation. And art is basically just a visual conversation. And once you uh, open the introduction, just feel at ease. Um, we're all people and it's like the first day of school. We're meeting, but we have uh, one up, we have a common ground and that is the love of art. That's great. Joa, do you have anything to add in to that? Oh, did we lose him? We may have lost him momentarily. There he is. There. 
Remember, you're you're muted. Unmute your yeah. Uh, can one of y'all unmute him? Oh, 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 there we are. Myself on mute. Yeah. There you no, go. I don't, I don't know that I have anything to add. <laughs> okay. Uh, Yoram. I have advice. If you would give it to all the artists, send all your email lists the thing because people that are just going to walk into the Woodlands show um, online, they'll be, I think, shy to, to, to do this. They don't know me. They don't know the others if they don't know me. But people who have bought from me and know me or were in my booth and never bought, they would feel comfortable. So I have, you have to email them ahead. What I did three weeks ago, I didn't do this. And on Saturday, I, we all had empty booths, virtual booths. Right. Sunday at 7 a.m., probably Jenny got it too because she bought one of my paintings once. So she's one of my, on my mailing list. So I sent at 7 a.m. or something from Florida. And then all day, or Sunday, I had people nonstop and people buying. So if you don't work the mailing list, I don't think for now people understand this can really be a show. Right. People who are just wandering into the woodlands. I think the advertising you did, I don't know what you did as much as you did. I don't know how many people who have not been to the woodlands show and don't have actual artists that they know if they would come into this virtual thing, they'd be shy, I think, embarrassed. That's right. So, yeah, so um, it's been an interesting process for us um, trying to reach all our market. And because we have such a variety in the audience, you know, we have people who just come to walk on the waterway. We have people to come be inspired. We have people who come particularly to buy. And all of those people read and see different things. And so... We try to touch everybody. Unfortunately, we can't touch them as often as we would like, but um, learning something new is always good. And we're really encouraged um, by the community and how they've come out and uh, responded. One from last night, wow, what a great event last night turned out to be for us and hopefully a prelude to what's coming. What I always found in, find interesting at the art festival when people are afraid to go into a booth, um, I think it, I think Barbara was right. It's all about intent, setting an intent before you go. Um, am, I, am I just going to look? Am I just, um, am I really going to buy for, you know, to have, hang a painting in my living room? Um, and I think if you walk into an art festival with an intent, you're gonna have a great time. Um, if you know you are not gonna spend any money, then that's your intent, um, but you're there maybe to learn something. I always am so fascinated. One of my favorite things is to hear the artist's story. Where are they from? What inspired them? Um, you know, how long have they been doing this gypsy life? Um, uh, so those are a few of the things that I think are really exciting about the art festival and uh, walking into a booth. Again, it's just set your intent before you go and it, and it shouldn't be a scary thing. It should be an, a very joyful experience. I agree with that. Um, another thing that you can ask, um, I really enjoy hearing the different techniques. Um, a lot of times we look at art and we think we know how it was made. Um, and a lot of times there's quite a different process than what you expect. And so that's a great way to um, start a conversation with the artist. Um, and I've, this is my 10th year working with the festival. Um, I find the artists, everybody's so friendly and engaging. And so even on in this virtual world, um, just trying and, and reaching out, um, you have a good interaction with the artist that way. Um, the next question we have, uh, when are the best times to ask an artist about his or her art online? Are there times that you may have, um, you may be a little, have more time to get into further discussion? Um, do you enjoy maybe your, your patrons reaching out? And that's a great thing with Aventini is that we have a messaging um, aspect of the, of the platform. And so it's really easy for the patrons to just hit that message button and connect with the artist. Um, are there any, do you have any advice on, you know, best times to, to reach artists? 
Um, I'll answer that, Sal. Um, from my perspective, I always tell the patrons whenever the mood hits them to um, initiate the contact. Now, of course, if it's one o'clock in the morning, don't call me. <laughs> but feel free to send a text message or an email because sometimes it's that spontaneous reaction and the art is meant to evoke a feeling and sometimes that's spontaneous. So if they initiate, don't be afraid to send a text message or email if it's off hours, definitely, and we'll uh, follow up with you because the whole goal for us being here is to interact and to sell the art and for others to enjoy it. And if it's during the hours that we post it in Eventini, then uh, please reach out. And like I say, we want to see faces because we've all been indoors. So we want to <laughs> interact and we're more than willing um, to talk with you and follow up. So it's an exchange, you know, respectful of each other's time, off hours. Uh, we've got our hours posted online, but uh, we just would love to hear uh, from you. And the worst thing is to want to say something or share and to hold back and then miss that opportunity. Right. And maybe call and we're back traveling again. So this is prime time. We're sitting waiting. <laughs> <laughs> do you ready? have any, anything to add to that? Um, I, I would just say, um, in a lot of ways, it, it you know certainly I think right now, um, at least for us, we we try to be as timely as we can in uh, in responding back to someone, and and certainly um, in this day and age, somebody can always reach out, whether or not it's a you know it, like you say a text or an email, um, and in this setting, um, for example, I, I guess just this weekend, it's uh, while I'm not going to be sitting at my computer screen all day today and tomorrow. I'm going to be present and constantly checking to see whether or not somebody has a question or whatever so that I can try to respond in, in fairly short order to them. That is one of the great things with technology is that we we have so many ways to um, connect with each other. Uh, and yeah. thankfully during this time, we, we do have, have those tools, makes it makes it a little easier. It doesn't replace in person by any means, but um, it is nice that we can see each other virtually at least. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> are there any strategic times um, that you would recommend? We, our, our festival, we've got live programming um, for the next two days, today and tomorrow, but our marketplace is going to be open um, through the end of the year. Um, but if our patrons that are showing up for today and tomorrow, what are some strategic times that they can, you know, to take advantage of the, the two days that are kicking off and the excitement? Um, are there anything that you can add? Of, or if when we go back to in-person festivals, um, a lot of times, normally we have over 200 artists at a two-day festival. Um, and sometimes that can be overwhelming for our patrons. Are there any strategic planning of how to shop when you've got 200 artists um, and do you want to see it all? Well, I think this, um, this is a unique opportunity because uh, when we're in person festivals, sometimes you're just beelining it through to get to see as many artists as you can. The great thing that you guys have set up with the Woodlands Waterways this weekend is you can click on to Eventini off hours, if you're an insomniac, the middle of night, and you can shop and look and preview, make a list out of the key artists you want to connect with or what questions you might have. And during the uh, festival hours, connect with those people and um, you're probably much more effective uh, this route than you know just beating the pavement and trying to see as many as you can or waiting till they're done with another customer. So uh, I think this is prime for uh, collectors to uh, interact with artists and to uh, invest in the Woodlands Waterways. That's true. This, this gives the opportunity of, of expanding that time of connection. That is definitely one advantage of it. Yes. Um, and here's a big one um, that'll make for interesting conversation, I'm sure. Uh, when we walk into a booth and we see the prices on your beautiful artwork, are those prices negotiable? Mm. Uh. Well, I'll speak for myself and only myself. Um, I'm a, a businesswoman as well. So um, with my art, I take the same practices into that. I take in consideration the economy, 
the region that I'm in, uh, I frame my own artwork so I have an advantage to use uh, remnants and things to make, the bottom line is to make art affordable. I paint so that people can collect. So I do not barter a lot because I've done my research and I try to uh, have a fair market value. So how I reach my target market and beyond is I have um, exclusive high point artwork and then I also have entry level and collector work where I pay four by six paintings, five by seven and eight by 10. Now I only deal in original artwork, so that's unique for me. So if someone's interested in collecting my artwork and want to start off with something, same quality, great archival materials, but on a small scale, oftentimes my um, five by seven and eight by tens are um, more reasonable than if you were to purchase a print. So that's how I um, tackle that. And then of course, I, um, if an artist, if a collector is interested in collecting more than you know, two or three, then of course, we're business people, we, we would um, you know, uh, negotiate and, and, and work with something that's comfortable because we want this to be a happy union and everyone to walk away satisfied with the artwork. And we want to feel good about you know, letting something precious that we spent time on uh, go. So it's an exchange. So don't right. be afraid to ask. You know, if you don't ask, you don't know. So that's right. A, a reasonable um, offer or question is always entertained. It's never turned down. Right, right. Yoram, how do you how do you address um, price negotiation if people walk in and and go that route with you? Oh, the opposite. I don't negotiate. I tell them what discounts I have. If somebody buys a second or two or three, or it's their second piece after 10 years, they get 10% off. If somebody buys the fourth and on, they're collectors and they get 15% off automatically. I tell them this just so they know. Sometimes people come and think about, maybe I'll have these two small ones and this big one. And I say, if you get the fourth one, then 15% of all four. And uh, young couples or young people get 15% off automatically for life. And I tell them this because many young people uh, love my work and can't afford. And then they come three years later. I just had a sale from Arizona of a big painting. The couple met me in Dallas eight years ago when they were students and couldn't afford. They kept my card for eight years. And then they emailed me. We wanted to buy a 40 inch canvas and they did. They got the 15%, although they're 30, they have taught us. That's what I do. If somebody comes in and says, uh, would you think 1500 for a painting that's 1950? I get this as rude and I say, no way, thank you. And if they start negotiating from there, if I don't like them because they're rude, I would make sure that I probably won't sell it to them because I want my paintings to be in homes of good people with light and joy and not people who are like that. Uh, like somebody who says, would you take 1500? Uh, so it depends on the people. In the recession in 2009, people already, I gave 15% to everybody off the re regular. I started lower and there was one guy, I remember he said, look, this is the recession. He was very nice. I would like 25% off. And this was January, 2009. Florida. I remember I gave everybody 25%. It was a terrible, terrible month and two, three, four, five months in the beginning of 2009. So um, as Barbara said, you go with the times and with the situation. Right. In the Corona, I gave everybody 10% off up, up till now, right. nonstop. Yeah. Right. Joa, do you have thoughts on negotiating prices? Um, yeah, I, I think um, I, first, the approach that dad and I have, I guess, had at an art show is that um, to kind of echo what some other artists have said, um, it is case by case. Um, if we have, um, if we have a patron who wants to buy more than one item um, or for example, um, this very week we were contacted by a gentleman that already has three or four of our pieces um, that sees us up in Bellevue. Each year, we've done that that uh, BAM Arts Festival up there in, in the summer. And uh, he contacted us and he said, I've got a second home that I'd like something for here in Arizona. Well, 
when it's his third or fourth or fifth piece at that point, you know, you kind of consider somebody a, a, a friend. Um, right. And so there, there is some room there. Um, the other, other way I guess I would answer that is to say that because what we do is musical, um, it's very important to us to uh, inspire and support uh, young musicianship, young artists and, and what have you. Um, so if we have somebody who, you know, again, meets us at an art show and, and my feeling would be the same virtually, um, if they're a student and they really want something, um, sure, I'm, I may very well work with them um, just on that basis alone. Um, so it's, I, I would say, um, certainly it's something that we're open to. Um, we're not offended by anybody asking anything, although I think every one of us probably has anecdotes where we've had somebody that it just kind of feels slimy yes. and it, it feels <laughs> like they're being disrespectful. If that's the vibe that you're getting, then probably you're, you're not going to end up budging with that person. Um, right. I don't know. I, I guess that's my thoughts. Right. And, and I think it's important for our patrons to remember um, a, a lot of, your, your blood, sweat, and tears go into these, these pieces of artwork um, because this is your passion and you're fortunate to be working in an industry that is your passion. Um, and I think sometimes um, patrons can forget that because the market, the commercial market is so flooded with um, inexpensive art. And, um, but I think it's very important to, and, and again, for me, that's the connecting with the artist um, and I love that uh, our festival always requires that our artists be present for the two days um, because that's a very, that's a very valuable piece of, of what you're purchasing from the artist also. So, um, so th because this is virtual, um, how do you feel about the, um, the patron has the option of going through and they can place your, your artwork into your into their cart and virtually hold it for a while um is that something that that you would encourage people to do or do you would you rather encourage them to engage with you and um, ask questions immediately um, i don't understand what you mean they um, put it in the cart they put it in the cart and yeah. then you can't sell it to someone else well, I think other people can, can take it out of their cart. Um, and so if someone else wants to, to buy it, um, but I guess is there, is there an urgency to, to engaging and purchasing immediately? Um, well, I would say um, it's just like um, the retail, retail shopping, and of course now uh, we do more shopping online, uh, all of us, you know, from groceries on. Uh, so it's very similar to that, I would say. For me, if I am moved by something uh, and I like it and it's very unique, I move on it because I don't want the sacrifice of losing it later and having, you know, remorse that it got away and I'll spend another five years looking for that same item. So um, that's what I would encourage um, patrons to do. But sometimes uh, some purchases you need to discuss with the spouse or, you know, the other things that need to be worked out. This is all about communication is the key. So if there's something that they really want and they're like, well, let me just a few more details or I have some collectors that they just need, to, I have to give them space to think about it because this is a, a major purchase for them. So I would say contact the artist, keep the communication lines open, say, hey, I've got this in my cart. I really want this. Can you keep an eye out for me? And the last virtual show, I did that. Uh, another lady, she collected, uh, bought two pieces and she really wanted the third for the set, but she needed her husband's approval. So I agreed to keep an eye on it. Uh, through the end of the day, if, if someone else uh, put it in their cart or was interested, then I had her number to notify her and say, hey, Someone else is interested. Are you on the fence or have you made a decision? So it's each case 
uh, the uniqueness of this, we can play it case by case. But my first gut feeling is if you want it, grab it. <laughs> uh, and then if you need a little bit more thought, I would say contact the artist. We're just, you know, we're people like everybody else. We have families. We have to consult with our spouses and just, uh, you know, work it out between the two. And it usually ends up for the better. Yeah. Right, right. Um, are, are there any advice, is there any advice that you can give to people that are trying to build a collection that um, maybe they're not, maybe they're not just looking for a beautiful piece to go in their house, but they are interested in this really becoming an investment and, and building an art collection. Um, it, are there things that you can advise people of how to, where to start, questions that they should ask? Um, you know, if they're engaging with any artist, what are, what are the important questions that they need to know to sort of verify the artwork they're, that they're receiving? I would say the number one thing is to uh, know the backstory. Um, I've had artists, that, uh, patrons that like a piece of mine, and once they know uh, the story behind it, the inspiration, uh, maybe the piece has won multiple awards. Um, I, I had back surgery and I did some needle felting while laying supine for three months. So those pieces meant a lot to my collectors because it's literally blood, sweat, and tears <laughs> when right. I make those pieces. So sometimes uh, knowing the backstory, um, also uh, the materials that were involved uh, when they're collecting, they need to know if they're archival materials or if it's something that will last. So just as much information that you can find out about the piece uh, or the artist that would make you uh, confirm the love even more to purchase. And um, for me, I always encourage them to start with my mini prints or a holiday show to start off collecting. That way they have a visual representation to remind them a goal to reach. Okay, we're going to get that piece over the fireplace soon, you know, because I, I love this work. So um, that that's what I uh, do to um, encourage new collectors and those that are on a budget. I have seniors that only buy my four by six and five by sevens, and they wait for those to come out and they snatch them up. So uh, that that's what I would, uh, that's what I do personally on my side of the business. I love that. Joa, can you add something to that? Um. Well, I guess as far as advice for somebody, I think that's that's somewhat personal. Certainly, um, maybe the question is, if someone is putting together a collection, um, what is their what's their emphasis? Certainly, with with our stuff because it has a musical component. Um, some folks maybe want to build a collection based on the relationships musically between one piece and another or lack thereof. Maybe, maybe they want things that are quite, quite different. Um, on the other hand, we've also had folks that will buy several instruments from us. I, I remember there was, um, there was one couple that's visited us at, um, at the Woodlands several years. Uh, they, they seem to come to the show every single year. And um, the lady, I think, has four or five drums now, all in the same tuning but in different woods. Um, and so she's buying it because, yes, she likes the music, but she's really taken by the visual part of it. Um, and then, I guess, expanding beyond our work, um, it just boils down to, you know, what, what is a collector's purpose? Are they, um, are they trying to collect from lots of different artists with similar styles, or are they trying to collect... Um, you know, a particular look of, of wood, you know, dark, dark or light or, or whatever have you. Um, I don't know. I think everybody, everybody has their own um, idea or theme involved if they become a collector of work in, in what they're up to, how do they want to decorate their home, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I don't know if that really helps, but I've, I've noticed everybody seems to have their own um, emphasis. Right. Right. It's a very personal thing then. Yeah, very personal. Yoram, what kind of advice do you have for people who are just beginning a collection? Ooh, I am surprised. I don't, is this being, are people looking in, patrons, into this? No. You're going to record it and show it to them? 
No, I we do have we we do have patrons that are on the call with us. Oh, I don't see them. Oh. And Look, we are I recording. Don't... We are recording it, so it will be available um, afterwards also. I, I, I've never thought about this because it's up to them. And I am not a collector, so it's up to them. And I don't know what to say. I'm very, very fortunate. I have hundreds of people who have four to, to 34 paintings of mine, all originals. I have many hundreds. And um, they just do it. I don't know why, and I don't understand it. I am very honored by it and I'm touched and I, you know, some of them, I mean, yesterday I got an email, they just received the big painting they bought, which they bought three weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And they have now two very big paintings of mine <laughs> and they took photos and sent me. It's very moving, it's very warm, heartwarming, but I don't know to explain yeah. it or to give advice. People okay. do what they want. Is, is there advice that you would give um, a patron to, again, to, to sort of verify their purchase, to, to verify the, maybe the quality of the work? Um, quality is what they like or don't like. I don't, well, you mean the physical quality of the paint and the paper and the canvas? Well, right, right. You know, are there ways that, um, that they can verify that this is a true artist and that they're not they maybe passing off it. art that, that is not um, truly their original artwork? Um, or, I don't know. I mean, I guess it does it, or does it just come down to being, it's such a personal experience there are people in some of the shows who slip in who sell buy sell and and import things from other continents and sell them as if they did them uh, we artists know them and sometimes point them out um, some directors just disregard this uh, and and keep inviting people like this but that's rare. There aren't many like that. There are a right. few. We right. know them. Um, and the rest is just a question of taste, I think, uh, and price point. Some people ask, is this, where's your signature? So my signature sometimes is into the paint. They want to see the signature. But most of the people that I find buy my paintings, they trust it because they see it. The point right. is the virtual show. That's why I was apprehensive. Mm -hmm. And I still am about, I don't know, about people who don't know your work, if they will buy your work without seeing a physical painting. Right. So the, the Facebook expert, a big market, marketing company that I'm going to work with, said he's going to send me a camera from Google, a 3D, that would take a photo of my work in such a way that people, when they see it, even on a screen, they will get the three-dimensionality of it. Right. and understand what it really looks like. Right. That's what he said. We'll see how it happens. He says, I want them to smell the painting as if they're in the real show. That's the problem with the screen, that they have to spend $3,000 on something they can't touch, they can't breathe. They only right. see a screen. So, But they, get, they have the opportunity now to actually message you, talk to you, see you, hear your story. And so, yeah, probably in a year from now, as fast as technology is going, this could be a totally different experience where right. it is almost feeling like it's live. Um, you know, the Star Trek. <laughs> <laughs> and there you right. are and seeing the artwork just, you know, revolving around you. Yeah. How cool will that be? That uh, never take the place of a real show. <laughs> So I, I think in this virtual time that you're, what I'm hearing, Yoram, is that it is very important to or it may be even more important to create that uh, relationship with yeah. the artist, for the patron to really engage with the artist and, and ask questions. Yeah, I think so. And also, maybe think of something. Um, even though we're all virtual right now and we're trying various platforms, whether or not mm -hmm. it is a show like this on an Inventme platform or our website or Facebook, um, I can't. I can't say how many times um, just over the last few months when I've taken the time to schedule a phone call or, um, or an in-depth email correspondence um, 
not so much Zoom, mainly because I'm just new with it. I'm not comfortable with the Zoom platform just yet myself, but yeah. um, having those those interactions, and, and I think because we can't meet in person right now, that's really, really meaningful. At least that's the feedback that I've gotten from our patrons is saying, wow, um, you know, even though I could go on your website and click a button and purchase that, the fact that you're willing to take the time to answer my questions and, and talk with me, that intimacy, I think, is something that maybe just as human beings, frankly, we're all craving a little right now. Um, and it's been something that the feedback from the patrons I've, I've interacted with has been very meaningful for them. I agree. Um, I also want to say that um, my last uh, virtual event, uh, there was, we had Sunday teas, so to speak. Uh, there was a few of us uh, ladies that came into my chat room and I did just like this. I took the painting, I zoomed in, I showed them the frame. You know, it wasn't a sophisticated, like you're on uh, a device that's coming, but I was able to, you know, just show them virtually. And we were able to laugh and talk about the materials that they were archival. I could show them that it was wood, the museum glass. So uh, going into the chat room and there was about three or four of us. And I was just like, it felt like an art show, but I was taking it down off the wall. I was showing them the piece. And then a lady wanted a coordinating piece. So I got the two, put them side by side, held them up to the screen. And, and it was quite fun. And it, but the thing that I learned from that is once they go into the chat room and they're asking those additional questions and inquiring about 90% of the time, they were sales. They really want the piece. They just want the confirmation of what the materials yeah. are made out of. Um, you know, that is quality. I always send them a certificate of authenticity tell them about the archival um, properties, show them where the, like uh, Yoram said, the signature is, just uh, things to put them at ease. And then I also boast a little bit about myself. I'm an award-winning artist. This is who I am. This is why you should collect. I've been in this museum or this gallery. So those things um, help to confirm that a piece that they already love and saying, yes, you are on the right track by what you love at the end of the day but these are the uh, bonuses behind that piece. Allie, we can't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> Technology, still learning it. Um, I wanna give a shout out, cause I see a couple, I see Christina's back with us. Um, and I also see a couple of our other artists, Gary um, and Thomas, welcome. We're happy to have you join us and uh, happy to have you in the, in the festival with us. Um, Let's see, we've got a few questions. Um, one of our patrons is asking, is it okay to touch the art um, or to take photos of the art? Um, especially this, you know, um, definitely applies much more to the in-person festivals, but um, how would you advise patrons to, to address those issues? She would like the best me. approach is just to ask an artist. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's also um, a very personal thing, I think, for the artists. Some feel comfortable because their work is so unique and they know no one's going to be able to reproduce it. It's just right. amazing. And others, um, it's a very personal thing and they've had things reproduced and, and um, issues, you know, of, of hurt uh, with uh, re uh, reproducing their work. So um, I agree that always just ask the artist. Just ask. We'll just keep the communication lines open. Ask first. And I've sent uh, images to uh, patrons. I said, I prefer you not to take the picture, but I will send you an email of an image that you can look at up close and that's copyright. So that's, that's my a great idea. Too. That's a great idea. Um, and we have uh, someone's asking if you, how long will you hold a piece of art for a patron? Um, like you were saying earlier, Barbara, um, a lot of times you need to verify it with your partner um, or just kind of sit with it for a little while. Um, are you willing to hold it for more than a day or how does that work? Cool. Like I stated earlier, I um, it's kind of like a store. You go and you shop for a dress, you have, can you put this on hold? And they'll say till the day's end. But I do get that contact information from the person that's interested. That uh, helps to uh, build the trust bond, lets me know that you're serious about the interaction. I've got your phone number. If someone else 
um, shows an interest, I will respectfully give you a call and say, hey, somebody else is looking at your piece. Do you want it? And then um, if they say, well, I haven't decided yet, then I respectfully tell them, well, I have to move on and make the sale because they're right. ready to be so. So I think, this, again, all of this is about communication and don't be afraid to approach the artists and just talk to us because we're here uh, to make and sell the art and they're there to collect uh, the art. So, you know, it's a, an interaction there. Um, and real quick, is everything that the patrons are seeing, and, and I think this is, again, it's going to be very individual by the artist, but is everything that they see, is it one of a kind? And if they see a piece that has sold, are you willing to remake that piece um, for them to buy it? Then that becomes a commission. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm definitely a one-of-a-kind gal. Um, I don't have any prints. I do have a, a few um, a hospital ward bought some um, uh, one-of-one giclés. Um, so I do have um, a few of those that are small that were the proofs. But for me, everything is a one-of-a-kind. So if it's something that they like, um, I uh, usually contact the person again, communication, and ask them what was it that they liked the most about that piece and I will create them something along that line, but I do respect the other collector um, you know, for buying that piece first and uh, just create something unique for them, but yet uh, different. So everybody's happy. <laughs> right. Yoram, are all of you, are, do you just do only originals also? Yeah, only originals, but I have a lot of people who ask me to do the painting again but it's, and I tell them, it's not going to be the same. It's going to be in the vein of, that's right. what I call it, but right. very similar. I just had a woman from Switzerland uh, see a painting on my website. She saw it physically two years ago in Israel, in my studio. It sold. And I am shipping to her the new painting uh, next week, which I did very similar, but it's not the same. Right. I don't like doing that. I don't like copying my own, but sometimes it happens. Sometimes in a real show, it happened to me many times. People come in, they, they keep the secret. They don't tell me they love the painting. And they come and they say, where is it? I said, it's here, it's packed. Someone bought it 10 minutes ago. Oh, and can you do something like it again? And I say, I can do something. I don't promise it'll be exactly. It usually is even better the second time. But yes. it's different. I got to have the freedom to have fun and go crazy and do it similar, but not the same. Right. And it happens a lot, a lot to me right. because I don't make prints. I, I paint the same painting and I wave off the 15% for a commission. When someone wants the same painting as just was sold, I say, okay, I'll wave it and just pay the same price. And it's very hard to please them and do the same painting more or less the same, much harder than having fun with the first time. But I do it because it's a big compliment that they wanted. So. Perfectly. And we've only got just a few more minutes left. Um, would one of you address, could you explain a little more about what a commissioned piece of art is? Is it more expensive? Um, what makes it unique? How does that work for you? I get two, two six feet paintings, two different ones for two different clients, thank God, in Southern Illinois. And one was from a photo they took of the backyard of a poppy field. And one was so complex, I can't begin to tell you now. It was for a, a big company and it was a mixture of ideas from classical Michelangelo to, to science and Louis Pasteur and everything. And it was very challenging, but I loved it. So both of them, I finished. It's all, it's different each time. Some people right. want their portrait done. Um, I do it if it's a man. If it's a woman, I won't do her portrait ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Joa, do you do, um, you have a unique, with wood, it's a little bit different than, than our, our two-dimensional. Um, do you do commission pieces also? And Yes, we do. Um, and I guess, um, an example of that, it, it, for us, it is unique because it, it, it's wood, but also musical. Um, if it is what we consider 
a, you know, one of a kind art drum uh, with very unique um, woodworking techniques, very rare woods, what have you, then, um, then there's that conversation. Um, and usually that's, that's in dad's wheelhouse. Uh, as, as far as having the conversation and the back and the forth with the customer about yeah. uh, visually what they like. If it is a customer that is buying for musical reasons, um, then I'll have a conversation and a back and forth. And in fact, I've just completed a series of three drums, uh, each of them different woods, each of them very different scales and tunings um, for someone that is in the Netherlands and they are attending a musical conservatory there. And so we've had a back and forth over the last couple of months talking specifically about what he wanted. Um, And I really love that because those types of conversations really stretch us musically and allow me to do things Mm -hmm. that I've never done before. Um, Without getting too much in the weeds, my favorite piece out of these three is one that is done in a musical mode uh, called Lydian. And I did some research about this and I discovered that Lydian mode is the most, um, the most often used musical mode in um, musical scores, soundtracks, some of the the, 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 uh, most exciting movies that we've all enjoyed, the music behind it, composers really love Lydian. And this was one of the pieces that he asked me to do is do me something in this musical mode. and just gorgeous and unlike anything that we've done before. So that beyond the sale and, you know, and the, and the need to, you right. know, to, to make, uh, make that happen as an artist, it, it just gives me goosebumps when I'm able to come up with something brand new that I'm going, wow, I, I want that for me now for a while. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I think, we, I think, you know, what I'm taking away from, from all of the things that we've talked about today um, for patrons, please do not be afraid to engage with the artist. Um, reach out, build those relationships, ask questions. Um, my, my mom always said the answer is always no till you ask. Um, and so it, it is, it, and it can be a beautiful collaboration when you create that relationship with the artist. Um, it looks like, are we almost at, are we at time, Melissa? Marissa, yes? Yep, we yes. are. It's 1130. Yeah. We can go a little uh longer if anybody has any questions and if you want to drop them in chat um otherwise we are at time can i just make a quick comment um about uh commissions i tell my new collectors and um patrons that come in the booth to put them at ease a commission is basically um as if you went into the department store and you bought a dress off the rack well that is just uh purchasing you know just regular art but for commission you go to a tailor and you say, I want this color, I want this design, I want this style, and it's specifically for you, and it's the perfect fit for what you have in mind, for your living room, dining room, for your uh, wife, um, just for yourself. So for me, uh, when I tell people commission, the differences is it's tailored specifically for you. And of course, those amenities and upgrades come uh, oftentimes with a, uh, a price. It's, it's not always as high as people think it is. It's just a uh, negotiation between the patron and the artist, but it's that tailored for you versus uh, just what's ready made off the rack. That's a great analogy. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. Um, I wanna thank each of our artists um, for joining us and sharing your, your knowledge and your experience um, and our patrons and our our watchers here with us. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to check out the rest of the programming. We've got a full day ahead of different programming. So check out the Eventini event site um, and you can just click on those different um, programming times um, and go to the virtual marketplace and view all of the art. For the patrons that are here with us, I really encourage you to, to check out each of the artists because there are a lot of interesting videos Um, some great stories, some beautiful studio tours or talks about the different techniques. Um, But thank you all for joining us today. We appreciate it. And and best of luck to all of you this weekend. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.